Hello guys and welcome to the second video to developing Linux kernel drivers. In this video we want to know how does the RGB controller software communicates with the hardware. The hardware in this case is the keyboard. Before we dive deeper I want to let you know that I didn't have any experience in computer hardware and I was not a Linux expert nor an experienced developer. I didn't know anything about uh, drivers and I didn't know where to start and I didn't even know the list of things I needed to do. So I'm just recording this so you would know that if you don't know many of these topics that would be completely normal and this is something you can do. Okay. So if you're curious to see how it was possible to figure out the protocol between software and hardware with this limited knowledge, watch the rest of the video. Just like most people out there, I had no clue where to start researching a hardware protocol, so I started guessing. We know that there are external RGB keyboards that are connected to a PC with a USB interface, right? So maybe my USB keyboard here is only having the USB inside the laptop, but we are not sure about that. This was just a hypothesis, right? How can we prove it? So that's easy, we can just test it. And here is how. The world's foremost and widely used network vertical analyzer is named Wireshark. Wireshark is most known for its ability to monitor protocols in network layer. But there is a library available for Wireshark called libusb that allows you to monitor USB interface as well. So I started monitoring a USB interface and then changed a keyboard color using the controller software. As no data transfer log was recorded in Wireshark, I realized that this USB interface is not loud in controlling the keyboard. So I repeated the same step for other USB interfaces and nothing changed. So now we are sure USB is not the underlying protocol we are looking for. At this point I was stuck and I didn't know what to do. I decided to do something that I'm not sure if it's legal but also I can't find any evidence to prove it's legal. So I will just give you some indirect hints so you can guess the story but we will not dive deep into these topics. Okay so hint number one. One way to understand how a program works is to decompile it. And hint two. Many of the system programs in Windows are built in C Sharp. And hint three is that the IntelliJ company have a great C Sharp decompiler that's name is that peak. Okay? So based on this hints, let's say somehow we can search into the compiler for RGB keyboard and found out there is something called WMI. WMI stands for Windows Management Instrumentation, which allows interacting with low-level components in your system. So at this point, I believe that this is the underlying protocol we are looking for. But that's just the name of the protocol, right? And we have no idea what is the destination for this data that we are sending to hardware. And also what is the message. To do that, I use the Event Viewer program in Windows. It's installed by default. So you can just search it in Windows and after opening it, you will need to activate the WMI activity. Using Event Viewer, you can see the destination of WMI messages. Unfortunately, I don't have access to my laptop. So I borrowed my friend laptop to demonstrate using Event Viewer. I'm doing this using another program called WMI Explorer, which is used to explore the different instances and methods in your computer or other computers in WMI activities. So instead of using the Acer actual software, I'm using the WMI Explorer to trigger a method and then watch the intercepted message using the Event Viewer program. Okay, now we will use WMI Explorer to explore our WMI methods and classes. So make sure to run this program as administrator and here you will just click on connect on this computer which automatically connect to the computer and then at the end of the list you can see the WMI related methods. In this section we have Acer gaming function. 
It's a long story how I did find this Acer gaming function, but we now know that you can use Event Viewer, which I will cover in a few minutes. All right, Anomerate instances. This is a class and this will not sure finds or maybe create an instance. So here you can see all the methods available in this instance. Most of the methods are either get or set. Uh, for now, we just want to demonstrate this thing, so we can just execute the method. Uh, in this example, we're executing the get gaming LED, which, if I'm not wrong, uh, was used to trigger the LED below the turbo button in Acer Gaming laptops. So just like any function in any programming language, this may or may not accept an input. And also this may or may not produce an output. Uh, for the input, we will just enter zero and it will just show us a value, which we don't know the meaning yet. Okay, now you see what is this WMA Explorer thing. Uh, so we will next see how do we use Event Viewer to detect the WMI changes. So just search for Event Viewer in the start menu. And here you should click on view and enable this show analytic and debug flags. Then head over to application and service flags. Then Microsoft, Windows. And you will see WMI activity. Now in WMI activity, right click on trace and click on enable like, that's it. Okay, so now we enabled WMI activity monitoring in Event Viewer. So in this step, we should just use the Acer Predator Sense application to control this RGB keyboard or to execute. For example, this can be done by changing the color on your keyboard, and this should trace the WMI activity. But as I didn't have access to Acer Predator Sense in this laptop, I just had to use WMI Explorer to demonstrate that. I hope this don't get confusing. Okay, so now we will just execute a method and we will see the result here. There have been several WMI activities because this program interacts with WMIs and after checking some of these infos, we can see here one of these methods is Acer Gaming Function, and we here, and we also have the method that we called. But in details, we don't have access to what was the input and what is the output of this function. Okay, that's it for this video. In next video, we will uh, talk more about WMI and then we will try to understand what is the message or the payload that is being transferred to this WMI method.